You're at the high level for the more significant bits. This video sees a departure from the usual focus on the MSA 8080 ESP. And instead, uh, I'm talking about another project that I've been teasing about for over a year. Towards the start of 2019, um, I became aware of a fantastic library called FabGL, built by uh, Fabrizio de Vittorio. And uh, as a keen ESP32 developer, uh, I wanted to see what this library was capable of because it promised to give a VGA output, PS2 keyboard and mouse input, and had a working VT100 terminal emulation uh, included as an example. So I uh, put it together on a bit of prototype board and saw that it indeed uh, delivered on what it promised. But the VT100 uh, terminal emulation was, was pretty uh, quite advanced in terms of all of the escape codes that it responded to, but uh, wasn't entirely true to a real VT100 terminal. So I set about trying to uh, add and build on that library and on the example VT100 emulation and try to uh, develop something that was a more authentic full VT100 terminal emulation. That led me to then think about what kind of form factor I'd build the board in. And I decided straight away, since I'd recently um, built an RC 2014, that this would be an ideal add-on board uh, for my RC 2014. And hence that gave birth to the VT132 that you see in front of you. Um, the VT132 being the marriage of a VT100 and the ESP32 that powers it. I have since been point, it has since been pointed out that there really was a, an actual VT132. It was a kind of block mode IBM mainframe uh, version of the VT100. So uh, apologies for that confusion. Uh, this is not, not in any way related to the original VT132. The board you see in front of you is almost uh, production ready. Uh, it's the version 1.2 of the board. There's been a few prototypes before this. Um, you've seen them in a few of my Twitter posts uh, on standard green um, PCBs. About the only thing I've thought to add to this and the only revision I've made um, ready for production hardware is to add a jumper to separate the, uh, to be able to uh, disconnect the power rail from the FTDI um, header that you see down here below the logo um, so that you can have it connected to um, a PC for console output uh, to, to look at the logs, um, but actually power it externally or power it from the uh, RC2014 like I have at the moment. All right, well, that's enough of the uh, logo side of the board. Give me a moment and I'll just uh, reconfigure my RC2014 and turn everything around so that you can see the front side of the board. Right, so here's the business side of the board. Um, the RC2014 that this is plugged into is a RC2014 Pro. It's a very uh, stock standard build. Uh, this is not the um, banked um, everything for the uh, ROM WBW build. This is just using um, 64K um, memory and ROMs um, and the Grant Searle um, boot ROM. The VT132, as you can see, has a um, ESP32 Rover on it. Um, the silk, the, the, the um, pads and the silk screening also allows for an ESP32 uh, VROOM or whatever they call it to be used instead, but you'd have restricted functionality because of the uh, because there's less available RAM, and I'll get into the details of that a bit later. The other thing is you can see on the board, obviously the standard um, PS2 keyboard connector, standard DB15 for VGA. Um, there's a buzzer here to implement the bell function for the VT100. Uh, reset switch and programming switch, and the programming switch doubles up for something when it's in normal operation, which I'll come to later. There's an FTDI header here um, you can plug a USB converter or drive it as TTL levels 
or even a Bluetooth adapter onto this, but this is purely for programming the ESP32 and for um, looking at the logs that would come directly off the ESP32. Uh, there's an onboard regulator here, um, so it takes five volts from the RC2014 bus and regulates that down to 3.3 volts for the ESP32. Um, you can see I've got the second header row in here for a double header. Um, the reason for that is that this board actually accepts both uh, UARTs from the RC2014 Pro header. Um, port A effectively is for the VT100 and port B is for the other main feature of this board which is an embedded um, simulated AT modem over Wi-Fi and Telnet. Uh, thanks to the wi integrated Wi-Fi in the ESP32. In this case, I didn't have a double header to put on, so I've used a couple of jumper wires here um, to take that second, uh, the, to take the leads for the second UART port B for the RC2014 off to somewhere else on the uh, PC uh, on the um, RC2014 Pro backplane to tap into that uh, second serial port. Okay, well. That's a tour of the hardware. Um, we should fire it up and get it on screen and give you a tour of the features.